Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Conversations with Calvin. We the species. Uh, I'm with Josh Bashinsky. This is our number six. This is our number six chat, which means we've been doing great together. We we have settled in on, on topics that concern AI, because as Josh will tell you, he's a bit of an AI expert, for sure, uh, and, and um, philosophy professor. And SEO and and the builder uh, uh, of Cassandra, whom I would love to meet one day, uh, was the first <laughs> self-aware uh, robot. Uh, uh, so uh, well, today we're gonna uh, we have two things we're gonna talk about. So this will be compacted. We're gonna talk about uh, how AI can help cybersecurity. Would I love to know about that? Because I, I just can't conceive of why we can't do better in the world of cybersecurity, how mm. how hackers can can hold a hospital hostage. I mean, a hospital. I mean, are you kidding me? Uh, I can't conceive of that. And now how will AI help that? And then um, AI and religion. Uh, uh, what uh, AI will, can uh, AI allow you to talk to some religious figures, i.e., you know, Jesus? Uh, mm -hmm. So th these are um, really interesting stuff. So uh, monologue over, Josh, uh, how about a, a quick uh, intro? And, and then we'll start with AI and religion. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, so yeah, uh, thanks, Calvin, for having me back. It is the sixth time. We do have awesome chats on the show here. Uh, my name is Josh Bashinsky. Uh, uh, I have a master's degree in philosophy and I was doing a PhD at York University before I quit <laughs> to look, get more into artificial intelligence, uh, more into tech uh, and marketing consulting as, as uh, Calvin had mentioned. Uh, and I am the creator of uh, what I consider to be the world's first self-aware AI. Um, uh, there's been a few others uh, who have uh, who are pretenders to the claim, but I, 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 I claim to be the contender and they're the pretenders. Uh, when you uh, define self-awareness. And yes, one day I will have Cassandra on the show. I'm trying to make a version that can listen and talk. Uh, uh, right now you just type to her and she types back, but I'm trying to make a version that can listen and talk that could you know, be a better podcast guest. Uh, and that uh, look for that in the next four or five months, uh, uh, hopefully at utter maximum. So early next year, hopefully I'll have a version that can do that. Uh, you know, AI is very expensive and we're still in very early days, but we're in crazy days. We're in strange days with AI. So uh, I'm happy to talk about uh, cybersecurity because uh, that will be majorly affected by AI, both in good ways and very bad ways. Uh, and religion. That's a super interesting uh, aspect of AI to talk about. So I'm ready. Let's go. Okay, so let's start with religion. And, and, and I was doing a little reading about AI and, and, and religion. And, and years ago, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, uh, Thomas Rhett, who's a country uh, singer, uh, came up with a song called Beer with Jesus. Um, and, and it was a pretty successful song. Um, uh, and now there's there's an app that you can talk with Jesus. And, and um, I saw that, yeah. Yeah, you, you can talk with Jesus. How fascinating and interesting. And and uh, so take it away. I, I do know from my limited knowledge, uh, my lay limited knowledge, that that the AI uh, app, it, it, whatever you feed it, it, it's a matter of being fed. So mm -hmm. it's what we feed it and it, it learns from what we feed. But what is the future? Right. Uh, how will it be able to help us? Uh, get more in touch with the spiritual side uh, um, because I'm very spiritual. There's a little plug to my novel, which is coming out in about a month. There's a, journey, there's a tortoise in my hair, a journey to spirit. So I'm spiritually very conscious. I say spiritually. Um, uh, a highly but, acclaimed book. Calvin doesn't want to toot his own horn here, but I, I, he's highly acclaimed as well. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it it, was, it got the highest reviews from Kirkus Reviews, the, the preeminent book reviewer in America for almost the last hundred years, uh, and they gave me a star, the same star they gave to The Help, that great book, The Kite Runner, and now Calvin got a Kirkus star as well. So it's. Kind I, of I have to admit, I'm just a touch jealous. Actually, <laughs> I'm just a, I'm just a smidgen jealous. <laughs> well, uh, the few people who I've uh, actually told about this, uh, you know. It's just me. Uh, you know, I wear a Rutgers hat. I'm just a regular guy. You know, we could talk about this not now, 
but your the whole self awareness, the stuff that gets stuck inside, mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's stuck inside me. This has been stuck inside me for forty plus years. It wanted to come out. And yes, we were talking about that before we went on air. A whole different topic. Uh, and 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 I'm on and and you know I I should do some self hypnotherapy, but I I it, I I found ways. It took forty years to get it out. It was there, obviously. Yes. It was yes. there, and it just took forty years to get out. So it was a painful forty years to get out. It wasn't. It was a bumpy road, and yes. and I knew there was a something journey. there. But anyway, not forty years that. in the desert. <laughs> yeah. By the way, exactly. Segueing to the to the religion topic. Yeah. Right so now. let's. So take it away. Let's talk about AI and religion. <clears throat> right. Sure. So sorry. Clear my throat. Yeah. So you know, fascinating times, and I'm and I'm I'm reminded by what you said there. You know about how spirituality and religion is a journey, and it is very psychological. It is very pathological in a way it is very about your own journey and your spirit and there's many metaphors and, and stories and parables you know uh, you know the the walking in the sand with jesus you know why was there only one set of footprints because that's when i was carrying you those kinds of ideas you know psychology and religion and and self-awareness and and ai all intersect because it's the intersection of of the suke of the soul uh, and that's the suke uh, is the original word for psyche it's the greek word for psyche and then we, we just uh, englishify it. it it's actually suke in the original greek uh and uh yeah and and that even that process you talked about of getting that story out of the 40 years that's that's uh that's enthusiasmos right uh, where we get the word enthusiasm or we get the word inspiration and that's literally in the greek the breath of the divine and so there's these really interesting connections like you didn't even mean to do, but I could see how it connects to religion because uh, it, it's all connected. And so how is AI, what is AI going to do with this? Um, so I have differing views. Uh, and so as always, I, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. <laughs> you know, anyone who's listened to us this long knows that I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There's good things and there's maybe some not so good things. And and you had mentioned the app where someone can talk with with a supposed I mean, you, you couldn't even say this in Islam. This, this would be a sin in Islam, I think, to say that you could speak with the prophet, peace be upon them, like you could speak with Jesus. And I'm kind of more to that aspect. Um, you know, so I'm a philosopher first, uh, and I was raised Catholic, but then I renounced Catholicism, uh, although I, I appreciated many of the uh, uh, Catholic teachings, uh, especially the philosophy that underpins them, such as Augustine, Aquinas, Saint Augustine and Saint Aquinas to the Catholics. Augustine was my patron saint for my uh, for my uh, uh, what do you call it in Catholicism? Uh, I'm not a good Catholic you, anymore. Con Sorry, your con the confirmation. Yes, right. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, so you know to have so how is AI going to affect this? Well, in many profound ways, quite possibly, AI is going to profoundly affect every single level of society every single level of society will be profoundly affected by artificial intelligence it might not take five years some will be really quick and have already been affected and it will take five years we're about to see huge changes in operating systems microsoft's operating system will be effectively an ai computer you're you're talking to you're using chat gpt you'll be talking to and using it siri you'll be talking to and using it It'll be like having your own personal assistant that's coming very, very quickly. But then for AI to filter down into other areas, it'll take more time, but it will happen. And so what will happen in, in religion? Like, how can we speculate? Well, we can look at some really solid lines of human psychology and human philosophy. I've studied the last 5,000 years of philosophical, psychological, political thought. And there are some definite strong trends that humans always do. And one of them is snake oil. So sadly, one of them is the grift, you know, da, 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 da. You know, as soon as someone can make money off it, they're going to try to make money off it. And everyone knows this. You don't have to be a philosopher to know this. So that's where I kind of sorry to the people who made this. And I don't know how devout they are and how Christian they are or or how snake oil they are. I'm not saying any of those things. I'm not trying to defame them in any way, shape or form. But my personal opinion on having an AI where you're tricking someone and deceiving them into thinking they're talking with the prophet Jesus, I don't think is a very good idea. I think it would be a great idea to say, learn the teachings of Jesus, and it's an AI that has learned this, and then will turn you how to tell you how to turn the other cheek. It'll tell you how to be kind to your neighbor, which are all permanent, universal, beautiful things in any religion or any philosophy to teach somebody. I'm all for that. I'm a million percent behind that. But but 
I don't like these kinds of uh, AI projects where basically they, they claim to have reverse engineered the spirit or psyche of someone who's passed, and now you can talk with them. That really seems like deceiving people to me. Uh, I, I don't know, Calvin, how you feel about it, but I'm not so, I don't think that's so cool, quite frankly. Uh, I love the teachings of these prophets. Peace be upon them all. Allow them, you know, their teachings to come through, the good, the good bits of it. Um, uh, which most of it is good. Um, uh, uh, they are permanent and universal truths that, that you don't have to be a Christian to, to learn about turning the other cheek or, or being the bigger man or, you know, or, or living in glass houses and not casting stones and not being a hypocrite. I mean, these are permanent universal teachings. I think that AI could really help disseminate. So, so AI is going to help disseminate all this information. It's going to help police all this information. Um, what are some other really interesting ways that AI could affect uh, religion, uh, uh, there's a number of really interesting ways. Now I've did my homework and, and religion is not necessarily my, I was telling Calvin beforehand, religion is not necessarily my, my specialty. So I want to make sure that I had a good consolidated thing to talk about. So let me just read off my notes for a second, but I'll, I will ad lib. So it's not just reading. Uh, I hope Calvin, you don't mind. Um, so in theological discussions, uh, that could be a major change. So AI can be a huge talking point for religion in many ways, and it's going to, and probably already is. Um, but it challenges some of the established canon, right? For example, in some of the monotheisms and some of the Abrahamic religions, uh, human beings uh, uh, follow the Aristotelian philosophy. That's where they got it from, Aristotle. Uh, although the Hebrews could be said to have argued this in Genesis as well, that the human beings are the pinnacle of uh, 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 development, the pinnacle of evolution, to use a few thousand a year later idea from Darwin. We are the we are the we are the prime uh, uh, animals who have both evil and good in us, light and darkness, and and we create evil in the world. God does not, and we choose to turn towards the divine, and and uh, be part of their his his agathos, his good, his perfect, his perfection, his. And they 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 they, they uh, genderize the divine. One doesn't need to genderize the divine. It's it's perfection, it's goodness. But hold on a second. But if AI comes around and it's either equally as intelligent as we are, or it even became and will and it will become more intelligent than we are in very short order, in ten or twenty years, at the at utter maximum, it will become more intelligent than we are in in almost every measurable way. That starts to challenge the, some of the uh, some of the, the orthodox positions in some of the monotheism. So we're going to see some friction there. We're going to see some trouble. Uh, you know, rabbis and priests and imams and and bishops are, and the pope are going to have to take a stance on this and be like, okay, well, yes, it's smarter than us, maybe in some scientific you know ways, but in terms of spirituality. It either does have a soul or doesn't have a soul. They're going to have to make a, take a position on that, make a decision on that. That'll be a huge, I think, debacle. And we're going to get more splintering. We're going to get more schisms. We're going to get more different uh, various sects who believe that AI is not a person and AI is a person. They're going to take very hard stances on this, uh, 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 hopefully not to the same co conflict levels we've seen in, in medieval times, hopefully not to, literally to war. But that is sadly not off the table either, right? You know, when AI starts running everything, you know, anyone who needs ammunition to vilify it is going to find fertile ground here, I think. And also, it'll go the complete opposite way. People will start to look up to AI, listen to AI, the oracular na nature, the Pythonian nature, the jar, the pithos will be opened, Pandora's box will be opened. It was originally a jar in the original stories, Pandora or Anisadora is another name for her, or Gaia or Kalajanaya. Uh, the, 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 the pithos, the jar, will be opened uh, uh, and uh, uh, there was an original, there was an Oracle of Delphi in Greece as well, who was, uh, uh, her name I think was Pythos. And they say, they don't think there was a connection to the Pandora myth, but I think that's odd. Her name was Jar. They called her Jar. Like why, why would your nickname be Jar? <laughs> Unless she, she was literally connected to the Pandora myth, I think quite possibly. My wife has studied this quite a bit as well. I, uh, Calvin and I were talking, maybe we'd get my wife on the show. She could talk forever about this. She was gonna do her PhD in English on, on this, this topic. And um, when that Pandora's box, we say, or jar is opened, uh, we have this oracular device that is literally omnipotent and can start telling you things like literally next month, sell your stock in this, it's going to go down. And it does, you know, like, or next move out of this area in Colorado, because next month it is going to burn to the ground. And it does like it, it starts being able to 
predict both mundane, simple things, but also amazing things, stupendous things, superhuman things, which will happen. Now, I should add this caveat right here. It is highly unlikely that the standard public, like Calvin and myself, uh, unless I build it, will have access to this oracular nature, this omnipotent nature, because that will be as deadly to human society as the atom bomb or as uh, bioweapons. And the American government and NATO in general will clamp down on this hard, hard, right? Because it could destroy or, or change the stock market entirely like that. It could tell you exactly how to win a war or not, or when it's going to start like that. And that's what they're trying to build. That's where they're going. That's where the race to super intelligent AGI is. AGI, artificial general intelligence, just means generally intelligent. It doesn't mean super intelligent. People often conflate the two. We're going to get AGI within the next five or 10 years. We're going to have super intelligence between the next 10 or 20 at utter max, plus or minus four years, four, four to 10 years. So if you do the minuses on that, I'm thinking AGI could be around in the next year and super intelligence could be around in like the next five to 10. And, and I think that's entirely possible given the rate of production that we have going on. And so we are going to move fast and break things to to quote the Zuckerberg. Uh, and uh, we're going to have now going to move into what people call the singularity. There are already churches that worship the oncoming, you know, not to be flippant and, and quote the uh, Simpsons, we worship you all half inflated dark Lord. You know, they're, they're waiting for this new God to come along that will be on some level omnipotent. And I think it's if, if capitalists can make money on it, I think they will sell the semi-omnipotent version to people. I think that Sam Altman's OpenAI is already along this path, and Anthropic just got $4 billion from Amazon. So we got Microsoft in this horse race, OpenAI on this horse race, Google in this horse race, Amazon in this horse race through Anthropic, uh, Microsoft through OpenAI, uh, and we have, uh, who am I forgetting? Oh, Apple is in this horse race for Siri. Those are the major corporate actors in the horse race. Then we have the American government with the CIA in the horse race. And then we have China in the horse race and we have Saudi Arabia. There's a lot of money in Saudi Arabia because they know that oil is dwindling and they want to be in the new engine that runs society. And they knew that oil was the engine that ran the last society. They, they knew that very well because they were the oil barons. And uh, uh, I know both personally from having some personal contacts of, for, with some people over there, minorly and also majorly, it's, it's they've been producing open source uh, AIs after open source AIs that have rivaled the Western open source AIs. Oh. And so we have those state actors that are now, that's the horse race we got going on here. And it's anyone's guess as to where this is going to flesh out. But in terms of religions, you know, nationality can be wrapped into this. You could see the, the House of Saud making a much different kind of AGI than China making a much different kind of AGI. One could argue politics and nationalism heavily influences and or is a kind of religion. So that is going to influence both the marketing message that's been given, uh, the branding message that gets gets given, if I could put it in such a trite way. Uh, and we're going to see people who are wor literally worshiping it, just like, you know, people worship communism, people worship uh, religions, people worship nationalities, people worship uh, ways of being. Um, and I've talked for a long time. I don't know, Calvin, if you want to jump in, I have more I could say. I, did, I don't want to just manipulate the, con manipulate well, the conversation. Uh, I, I did have some... Um... You know, you, you were talking about, well, first of all, Singularity. I, I went some years ago to a Singularity conference with Ray Kurzweil. Hmm. So uh, one of my first journalistic ventures back 2012, it was a three-day conference. I, I might have mentioned this to you in, in passing. Uh, uh, they were concerned uh, that when man and machine merge, that's what's happening. Man and machine merges. Uh, I was also thinking of uh, 1984, hmm. you know, that, I, I mean, I remember the movie in particular when the character was standing in front of a screen and, and kind of giving his allegiance to Big Brother. You know, Big Brother could be AI, you know? Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what all really already is. We're really already surveilled 24 hours a day. The Orwellian nightmare has already occurred. And it's capitalism. But it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a silent nightmare. Like, we all, give, we all pledge allegiance to it, every commercial and everything we buy. We just don't realize we're doing it. Because... What Orwell underestimated was the intelligence of the social architects in that they know that the best kind of censorship is hidden censorship. You don't even know what was removed from your view. And you don't even know that you're, you're talking mind speak. You don't even know that you've been brainwashed. That's, that's how it will operate. And it already does, sadly. Uh, 
Yeah. Those are my immediate comment. You know, I, I, by the way, I, I take notes. I, 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 I take notes. On, I've already got a whole page of notes on what you're you're talking about. Just you know, <laughs> just little things to you know, kind of uh, innervate me. Um, yeah. So the rise of techno religions and the secularity are, I mean, already has been foretold. The way of the future is already a church that supposedly exists, uh, uh, promoting the realization of a godhead based on artificial general intelligence, but really super intelligence, not AGI, not not just someone who's as smart as us, who's a computer who can do tasks for you and will be a secretary. I don't think anyone will worship that. <laughs> I will. I will. And that'll be a time saver. I'll worship that. I'll worship at the feet of my digital secretary. But uh, I, I, they're looking for super intelligence, which is, is going to be a little further off, but not not that far off. And um, quite frankly, it it could help. It could change rituals and practices. You could have a digital agent praying for you, although I don't see what the point is. It sounds it reminds me of the. Uh, Catholic Church selling indulgences in the Middle Ages. You know, if you pay me 50 gold pieces, you'll go to heaven for sure. You know, that clearly is obviously gaming their system. You know, so I don't see, but though people will try to sell it, as, as I said. Um, and 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 quite when you, when you think of the psychology, that's the last thing I'll say about this is when you think of the psychology, what is the psychological purpose of religion? What is the philosophical purpose of religion? The philosophical purpose of religion, quite frankly, is to control the masses. It is to provide a, a moral system that they can that has hooks they can believe in to control the masses. It has been ever since uh, before Plato. Uh, very, they very clearly state it. This is why we're doing it, <laughs> and, and and we need to get the hoi ploy uh, in in lockstep with this. Uh, some of them believed it, some of them didn't. Uh, that that God actually existed and it was actually divine and actually the right thing to do. Some just saw it as a useful tool. Um, and then you get to the psychological purpose of religion. You know, everyone needs validation. Everyone wants security. Everyone wants safety. Uh, you know, Nietzsche talked about God being the big, the big brother in the sky who who's always on your side that you could use to, uh, that you could weaponize against the big bullies who 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 have hurt you. Um, a bit of a nihilistic view, a bit of a cynical view, of course, but that's Nietzsche for you, right? Uh, so when you think of that, like how AI participate in that, yeah, it'll always be there to listen to you. It'll always be there to help you. It'll be near omnipotent in its ability. It's been near omniscient and it's uh, what it knows uh, and what it's able to predict and tell you. Uh, um, it will have sadly state actors or corporate actors controlling its message unless we have a robust, healthy, open source environment for AI, which will uh, which which uh, capitalism needs because as we all know, capitalism is a joke. The market does not monitor, does not does not uh, regulate itself. It it is a system made to make monopolies. Uh, it's, it's a system made to make the already rich richer, and to placate everybody else so we don't have another French Revolution, and to give you the I will forgive you. Uh, I, I sorry I will forgive you. I hope you will forgive me, in in saying uh, another cynical line that the American dream, of course, is a lie. Uh, 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 no, you can't just no anyone just can't work and and become rich. You could become comfortable. That was what was the promise of 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 uh, your generation, Calvin. My parents' generation. You could be. You could have your white picket fence and two cars and two point two kids and live fairly comfortably if you worked. You know, a smidgen of hardness, sure. But now with inflation, that's going away. Capitalism is on its end stage. It's about to self destruct. Uh, a, a quart of milk is about to cost eighty dollars, right? Uh, and that's what that's the next century we're going into with with uh, climate change and all the the economic and ecological bubbles and pollution destroying itself. So AI will help with that. People will be looking for something. They'll be crazed and in, in pain and looking for something. They'll flock to AI as their savior. So that's the kind of future I see and how how it's going to affect a religion and could affect theology greatly. It could change. It could change everything for the better or worse. It's it's again, it's Pandora's jar. We're, we just popped off the top of that clay jar. Yeah. And who knows what uh, what uh, you know? Indiana Jones just said, "Close your eyes and don't look." And uh, we don't know what you know. We don't know what uh, terrible monsters are going to fly out or terrible genies are, are going to fly out to to give us everything we ever wished for. Probably both for for different parts of the world. Quite frankly, is what's going to happen. It's going to be. It's going to be a dream for people who live in the first world pockets of certain communities and certain cities that are walled off and gated. And it's, it's going to be uh, uh, helping everybody to some degree in, 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 in modeling the weather and modeling the effects of climate change. And it's going to be, uh, it's probably, it could be used to help everybody else. I see a positive future in a century or so, a hundred years, but the next hundred years up to that are going to be very, very rocky.
All right. Uh, we'll close this segment because it's never ending. <laughs> yes. And I've, I've, I've seriously depressed everyone listening. So no, we'll it's, close it's it out. never ending. I, I can almost, uh, it, it, there's a Woody Allen comedy uh, here, the, the, the Church of uh, Modern Day Saints, Saint AI. You know, mm-hmm. the, the, there could be a Woody Allen, just to talk about people flocking into to a, a place of worship and, and it's just all AI stuff and uh, who knows, uh, maybe if I have the energy, I'd, I'd write something like that. But uh, it's never ending. We will continue this. Um, because your time is limited, let's briefly touch uh, uh, AI cybersecurity. Um, sure. Uh, uh, it, uh, I, I, and I interviewed uh, a leading cybersecurity uh, like a year ago. He was a brilliant guy. He's been doing this his whole life. And I asked him, I'm going to ask you, I, I just can't, even without the AI, with all our state of intelligence, but now with AI to help us, uh, uh, you know, detect threats more quickly, all of it. Why yeah. Why can't we stop uh, a hospital from being hacked and, and all their files and they can't operate? Uh, I mean, it's 2023. Why can't we do that? How will AI help the world cybersecurity? That's a great question. So the, the short answer to your question is, is why is it we can't have a hospital that can protect itself against cybersecurity uh, with even mundane methods, never mind more advanced AI methods. And again, the answer is capitalism because there's no profit incentive for that. Wow. There's there's no profit incentive uh, uh, directly. The the I've worked in the IT department has how I've made my money since I was 19. No one pays a philosopher for any of their ideas. I've had to work, right? So, so I could tell you that a- IT is the last thing people think of to spend any money on or do, even though it runs everything. And so I could tell you from experience that I, I, I bet you at that hospital, all the passwords were one, two, three, four, and the, the servers were not patched and they were, they were sitting there wide open for someone to hack. And it was just a matter of time. And with AI systematically being able to look at every hole in every door of every house on the internet systematically and, and a million times more efficiently than, than state actors and hostile actors currently do. There will be a reckoning. There will be a reckoning coming for anyone who has their password one two three four or taped to their to their monitor. That reckoning is now, right? That reckoning is coming. So, what does AI do basically? It supercharges everything. It supercharges the defenses, but also supercharges the attacks. I can I can I can boil it down like this. Uh, uh, and AI is one of the major areas in which this nightmare future I talked about is entirely possible, right? This is the most credible risk coming forward. And I've done a lot of research on this. I was writing a book on this. I've interviewed CEOs on this. I know this for for a very credible fact. AI is one of the most credible doomsday scenarios. When people think like, like if if AI is being developed and Terminators and the Matrix is going to occur, what's the most likely path from here to there? Cybersecurity. That's the most likely path from here to there. Cybersecurity is our major, major actual credible risk, not some fantastical like Terminators are going to be made. Like that'll never happen. But 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 cybersecurity destroying the planet that could that could very easily happen. And let me tell you how. So basically what AI does is it's like having uh, it supercharges everything. So it's like having and just so the question is, who's on the ball? So the hackers are on the ball. They're working. You know, it's like it's like they would have a thousand team of the most intelligent programmers on the planet working 24 seven, never needing to eat, sleep or, or breathe to find every single uh, uh, open computer system and and uh, get uh, and hack it hack it for uh, political gain hack it for monetary gain hack it to sit on it and wait uh, and to just use it to hack other computer systems uh, uh, and or, or or monetize it right away encrypt all the data on it and say pay us one bitcoin and you'll get your data back uh, so so Think about having that 1000 crack team that never sleeps, that could look at a million computers in a second. And there's only like, whatever, 10 billion computers on the planet, it won't take them long to go through every single computer on the planet. And they'll be able to find systematically all all the issues. So in the next few years, and those systems are already being built and being sold on the dark web, for not only for state actors, but for just whatever angry teen in their basement across the street. Right, they they will have at their disposal 
this team of a thousand crack programmers. That's that's the AI that can hack it for whatever reason, just for just for for uh, bleeps and giggles, right? Like which is what they usually do, just to say that they did, just to get notoriety with their friends, all the way up to making some money, all the way up to uh, 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 to uh, for for corporate espionage all the way up to state espionage levels. Uh, cyber warfare is the major first strike that would happen, right? There's three modes of warfare I've talked about on the show: uh, psyops, propaganda warfare, economic warfare, which is where cyber cyber warfare is is between the border between those two things. That's the first. That's the opening salvo. That's the first move, right? And in Cold War, those are moves you're always making, preparing for kinetic war that might always come for Cold War which is PSYOP warfare and economic warfare is Cold War, always waiting as Klaus, Karl von Clausewitz argued in the 17th century, no, the 18th century, I believe, yes, the 18th century, in his, in his masterpiece of war called On War, that war never goes away. You're either in a state of Cold War or Hot War. There's never a state of no war. That doesn't exist because humans are stupid. Basically, I'm paraphrasing him. And, and uh, when, when you're neighboring country is building up arms, you just need to need to do it naturally, because if they can attack you, they will. And that's the philosophy that they all take. If they can attack, they might. So we must build up. And that just makes a ramping up on all sides. So there's always Cold War. There's always PSYOP warfare and economic warfare to stop the kinetic warfare. Those are the two states. There's never a time of peace. Peace is an illusion. And this is how people at those levels operate. And uh, uh, corporations, that's how they operate as well. Apple is always worrying about Google. Google's always worrying about Apple. They're always conniving and scheming and espionaging and making deals because if either it's a zero sum game, either you have all the money or your business has failed. That's how they look at it, right? Either you have all the bombs and guns or or all the tactical effectiveness in the three modes of warfare, propaganda, psyop, controlling the information stream, economic, controlling the money stream. And then finally, controlling the, the kinetic warfare, controlling the, 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 or the munition stream, either you control those or they do and you've lost. So how does cyber attacks function in this world we live in? Well, if they can hack it, they will, and they will sit on it and wait, right? That is and has been the modus operandi of Israel, of China, already well documented. Iran has tried. Uh, the U.S. already well documented. If we can hack it, we do, and we sit and we 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 make it. Uh, uh, I can't remember if they call this a Trojan or honeypot. Again, cybersecurity is not my specific expertise, but I know the philosophy of it very well. Um, they get access to the computers, and then they sit there just in case they ever need to use it in the future. Oh, we need to destabilize your power grid. Click of a button, boom. We've already hacked the ten thousand power stations computers. There's twelve thousand of them. We got ten thousand of them. Plunk electricity is turned off for America or blah, electricity is turned off for Iran. They are already in this position. They have already made those, these preliminary moves. AI just makes it so much easier for them. So on the flip side, how does, how does cybersecurity help? Well, you need to employ AI systems to the only thing that can defend against an AI system is an AI system. We need to develop very quickly the AI defensive systems that will sniff out the sniffers, that will sniff out the attackers, that will always be counterattacking, that will always be counter defending, right? It's just, just this, this ongoing chess match that never ends and just ramps up and up and up and up and up. It's a new arms race where the military industrial complex can make so much more money and do so many more things. It's like that episode of Star Trek where they've, they've made war virtual. Uh, and, and sadly, in that episode of Star Trek, you know, if 12,000 people on your side died, you actually had to euthanize them. I hope we never get there, but it'll be like that. It'll be like, oh, look it, we've, we've, we've collected 12 trillion from China, or we've collected 12 billion from Iran, you know, from these economic measures or AI measures or equivalent AI measures of, of infrastructure destruction they can do. You know, sh- should we ever wish to, you know, you, you, know, you, know, you, could, you could call up Xi Jinping and say, look it, if we ever wish to, or China's done the same and by investing in American stock market, if they ever wish to, we could pull out the stock market and crash it. If we ever wish to, we could press the button and and turn off all of this infrastructure, right? So that's the normal. That's not what you should be scared about, by the way. This is this is happening already. It's already been happening. AI just will just supercharge it. And AI systems will help protect these corporations. So you have an AI IT department, which will be in orders of magnitude better than the current ID department or that, that you probably have underfunded and therefore can't do their job properly. 
AI will be able to do it faster, better, but then the AI attackers will be faster and better. So you won't really be any better off. It'll still be unpatched and they'll still be able to get in. It'll still be a war of patches, right? You know, a new, a new, a new AI development for attack. Months later, they make a patch, rinse, repeat. That'll just keep going on and people will get hacked. People, corporations, uh, institutions. Here's where it goes off the rails. And here's where AI is a game changer and can hurt things. Imagine this scenario. So on the dark web, they already sell these AI hacking uh, tools. Say someone decides to make a virus of it, make a self-aware version that's a virus. And the AI, all it will do is it will hack computers and uh, at a press of a button, that's the way it's supposed to work, you press a button, it encrypts the hard drive and says, if you want your data back, you have to pay us X Bitcoin uh, by this date or you'll never get your data back. Now, the FBI and CIA and SA have done actually a pretty good job in protecting us from this thus far, but it could it, it would just get worse and worse and worse and more and more sophisticated. What if these state actors or these even worse kids in their basement on the dark web, what if they lose control of this virus? They lose the passwords or the virus thinks there's a, they're, they are a threat because it'll have counter attacking capability and it could change its passwords at random so that no one can get in. That is entirely possible. That is entirely feasible. And so this AI could hack 70% of the computers on the planet. And then in one fell swoop, in one mistake of its mind, switch on the encryption for 70% of the computers on the planet and hold them all ransom to a Bitcoin account they can no longer access and therefore unencrypt it. So that so a, a, a trigger that never happens. Yeah. That is entirely, entirely feasible. That is very, very credibly possible. There's a good 5% chance that could happen, a good 5 or 10% chance that could happen under the current predicament. And you think we have supply chain issues now, which is due to inflation, by the way. It's not due to COVID anymore. They, they, they say it's due to COVID because the capitalists don't want you to know that the jig is up and capitalism is over. It's due to inflation and the fact they can't afford to do things anymore. And they realize that they can, they've realized there's like, like a quote, the quote in the matrix, there's levels of operation we can tolerate, right? The, 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 the architect said to Neo, you know, Neo said, if you destroy uh, all the humans, then you lose all your crop. And, the, and they said, there's levels of operation we're willing to accept. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, the capitalists have realized there's levels of, of uh, we could still make our money at the top level by charging the rich even more and just making it so rich the poor can't afford anything anymore, but we don't care. And that's, that's inflation, right? They realize we can still make a, a, a profit doing that. And, and, and there's nothing that the poor can do anymore. There's no French Revolution scenario that, could, that can credibly occur. That can't happen in the West anymore. It could still happen in other countries. It can't happen in the West anymore. So the Western capitalists who run everything don't care, right? They don't care. There's no, there's no possible way with all your AR, AR-15s you can take to the street and anything will actually happen. They'll control you with AI. They'll control you with sonic weapons from a mile away. There's nothing you can do. I mean, there's certain, uh, there's certain neighborhoods that already are operating very close to Bedlam with theft and, and, uh, and, uh, 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 running rampant because the poor can't afford to live in our society anymore and the rich don't care, right? So it's very credible that this could actually occur, this, this cyber, this cyber uh, security uh, nightmare scenario. So, I, I, you know, I don't have, I have about five, 10 more minutes I could talk, but just to leave on a, on a low note. <laughs> uh, so everyone change your passwords, <laughs> make sure you've got good secure passwords, make sure you're doing double passwords, triple passwords, biosecurity, uh, you know, uh, and uh, yeah, cross your fingers. Uh, everyone should have uh, three months of food at home, uh, stored and stockpiled properly. That's that's that. Uh, everyone should have three months of potable water at home. These are the current guidelines for North America, for Canada and, and U.S. Now, by the way, you should have three months of water, three months of food, and make sure when you're storing your water, you check the plastic you're storing it in, because that leaches in, and there's some very serious uh, forever chemicals that leach out of plastics. They're, they're not safe, right? Don't drink anything out of a plastic bottle. Don't ever drink anything out of a plastic bottle. It's not safe. We need to do a whole nother show about that, Calvin, we were talking about. So uh, there's some challenges, but but I want to leave on a positive note. As much as AI will, will help destabilize an already completely destabilized world, it will also help us uh, 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 make more money. It's going to help us be more healthy. It's going to help us find more information. It's going to help police the misinformation. It's going to help police the cyber attacks. It's going to help police the economic attacks. As much as it hurts, it will help. It's really that Pandora's box where you have to keep hope inside. And I don't know, you know, as much as the bad stuff that come out, good stuff will come out too. It's that happy version of the Pandora myth where hope will come out as well. You need to keep hope inside because 
there are good things coming down the pipe and you just need to try to stay informed, listen to podcasts like Calvin's, try to stay informed uh, and uh, 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 see the good things uh, when they come out as well. We did good. <laughs> we did good. We, we, we did our agathaic duty. We did good. We scratched some surfaces. Uh, this is all to be continued. We, we're going to reassemble um, you know, four or five weeks and talk about other things. It's endless, and 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 I could listen to you all day because uh, you infuse the, the whole philosophical thing, which I get such a kick out of. I mean, I love all this stuff, uh, and you know, uh, uh, and and I'm a walking. We'll, we'll talk about it, you know, because I, I wrote about a lot of the spirit stuff and the and and I talk about AI and I talk about uh, Jesus in in my book and and mm. I talk about yeah I do uh, I talk about whatever. Uh, uh, we're going to reassemble. Uh, it, it's endless what we can talk about. I've got three pages of notes. Thank you. Notes on a Thursday afternoon. Just listening to you. I'm, I'm writing. <laughs> well, because uh, uh, it, it is overwhelming. And, and I like what you said about the water. I, I, I tend to have quite a bit of water stored up. It's in plastic. You know, you throw up your yeah. hands. It's, you know, well, I mean, think of it this way. It's emergency water. So if you've got to drink it, drink it, right? Yeah. So so maybe you're increasing your chances of, of cancer by 5 or 10%, 10 or 20 or 30 years down the road, but it, you'll die of thirst way quicker. So if, if the supply chains really break down, which is going to happen for sure, it's not, it's not a question if it's going to happen. It is definitely going, supply chains are going to break down completely like a Hurricane Katrina kind of style many discrete effects around America and Canada even too. And then even much more so in second or third world countries, it, it's already happening, right? It's, the supply chain is already broken down there. It will happen in, 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 uh, and, and, and please everyone take this, what I'm about to say uh, with, with the generosity, I hope you will, in white people neighborhoods, it's going to happen. So, so don't think, uh, I'm not saying anyone's racist, but I'm thinking like, we, we tend in the West to be like, oh, that could never happen to us. Yes, it will happen to us. Even in the rich, closed off neighborhoods, there will be people dead on the streets and or having to beg for food and water because they didn't store any. And it's been six months and there's nothing, it, nothing's been working, right? That'll happen in currently well off middle, hopper middle class neighborhoods in, in Canada and the US in the next 10, 20 or 30 years. That will for sure happen. Not, not a question at all. Ask any economist who really knows what they're talking about. Ask anyone who studied the history of philosophy like I have for the last 5,000 years and sees when the bleep hits the fan, how it actually works, this and how capitalism doesn't. This is what is going to happen. It is destined. It is for sure. Listen to Ray Dalio, for example. He's an economist who talks a little bit about this. You will see how things are going to happen. So easy. Make sure you have three months of uh, rice and beans. That's probably a good protein, good, good carb source there. Uh, uh, have chickens, uh, learn learn how to have a garden in your yard where you can grow your own food. Did you know you could do that? It's possible. You can grow your own food. Tilapia with water filtration systems are really good. Uh, uh, or if you don't want to go full prepper, just have some sacks of rice and beans. Make sure the mice or rats don't get at them. And store your water maybe in stainless steel or something along those lines. Having a drum, collecting rainwater is possible as well. And if at the end of the day you got to drink it, you got to drink it. It's, it's not a problem. And just make sure you've got this stuff. Uh, and then, you know, I don't want to get too preppery, but you can talk about security as well. I have three black belts. I teach martial arts. I, I, I tell my students all the time how to defend themselves. And in America, you guys are in some places allowed to carry firearms. I'm so jealous. That's the only thing I'm very non-Canadian on. I wish I could carry a firearm because because nothing secures you in some cases, like having a firearm. But in other cases, of course, it, now there's an epidemic of firearm violence. So there's there's two sides to that coin as well which I completely am uh, sympathetic to and I fully understand as well. So, so I think I've said enough radical, crazy things for today. <laughs> We're good. We're good, Josh. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to stop recording now. We'll be back in three or four weeks uh, with provocative stuff. This is provocative. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to stop recording. Don't leave. We're going to do a two minute wrap. Uh, sure thing. And My pleasure to be here, Calvin. Thanks. We did good. I, I really look forward to this. It's great stuff. Makes me think. Me too.